Hello, everyone. Uh, very good evening to all of you. Uh, today, so the topic for strategy creation is straddle with trailing stop loss to cost of other open legs along with re-entry of straddle. All right, so we will be taking questions only at the end of the, of the webinar. So let's start off by, uh, 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 let me start off by just sharing my screen. All right, so uh, right now my, uh, I hope my screen is visible to you all. So let us just start. I'll just admit two people more who are joining in. All right, so we will be taking questions only at the end of the webinar. Uh, so please be patient. Uh, so let us just start. Uh, so first of all, I will go, go to this uh, strategy creation page. So once we come to this landing page, what we will do is we'll just name the strategy, straddle, trail or move, move stop loss to cost of other open leg, of other open leg to cost which straddle re-entry, right? With Straddle re-entry. So the agenda is basically, we will first sell a short straddle, then we will put 20 points stop loss for each leg through separate repair once. All right, then we will once one leg stop loss is hit, we will trigger the second leg stop loss from set exit and we will trail stop loss of the open leg cost to cost and this will continue this straddle will continue in loop throughout the day continue in loop for the rest of the day all right let me just uh, admit a few more people who are joining in and uh, also we will use we will learn how to use positions detail in order to restrict the number of straddle re-entry. So for example, if you, uh, once the straddle is entered after two hours, uh, if the strategy is exited completely, after that, if you want to again re-enter two or three times, then also we can do that with you by using the positions details keyword. So we will see that also. All right, so let me just save this strategy for now. Great. Every time, remember that any changes you make, Always make sure to uh, save the strategy because uh, or it's the data or the formulas that you have put may go, okay? All right, so uh, first of all, let us now go to the first set where we will uh, simply sell the straddle, all right? So what I will do is I will select time, NSE is say suppose greater than equal to number if i want to take entry at 917 then i will just put 917 as the time and one more condition we will put that i will take entry only before uh, 3 pm all right so what we will do is we will just simply copy this time is less than equal to number 15 so the re-entries or whatever entries will happen will only happen between 9.17 a.m. till 3 p.m. in the afternoon, all right? After that, it will not take any entries. After this, we will also add two more conditions with net quantity keyword. To make sure that there are no open positions, we will use this net quantity keyword. So net quantity of traded instrument name with entry instrument underlying as Nifty Bank, B-A-N-K, you can choose the instrument that whichever you want. So for this example, we will choose Nifty Bank one one. All right, is equal to 
number and this video will also be uploaded on our youtube channel so you will be able to watch this webinar later on as well so nifty bank 111 is equal to 0 and also we will put a one more condition that nifty bank 112 is also equal to 0 112 is also equal to number 0 all right so let me just uh, admit a couple of more people who are joining in all right so once we have done this so this is basically a simple entry criteria that we have made for the straddle that we want to enter after 9:17 am and before 3 pm and also we will check that the first and the second leg of uh, the the entry condition that is the call leg that we will be using and the put leg is also equal to 0 so only when there is no open position then only the entry will take place all right so this is our entry condition and along with that we will put our simple straddle sell condition so sell nfo call nifty bank i will put this as intraday because this is an intraday strategy atm strike uh current week lots as 1 so because normally they in derivatives we use lots uh, quantity will be for shares etc so uh, lots as 1 is what we will put uh, all right so and we will add all right and close so this is for the call option and also we will add one more position for the put option so that will be the straddle and for put nifty bank mis since it's intraday again current week atm lots will be one all right so here we have uh, selected one call option for selling and one atm put option for selling all right so this is basically the straddle uh, entry condition that we have created all right now so this is the basic entry condition right so after this now we will put a stop loss for each leg that is the call option and put option through this repair once condition all right so we will put or uh, use two repair once conditions one for call option and one for put option so the way to do it is it's a slightly different from the normal stop losses that we put because we have to make sure that the second leg gets uh, exited from the set exit all right so what i will do is in the repair once first leg first i will check whether the instrument is traded so we will put two separate conditions one is traded instrument entry strike underlying is nifty bank 1 1 so this what this keyword does is it checks whether the first leg that is the call option has been traded or not so traded instrument entry strike 1 1 1 will check whether the call option is traded or not similarly what we will we want to also check that the put option is traded or not so we will put this as 1 1 2 so now once we have the confirmation that the first uh, entry has happened that is the call and put option have already been sold then at the same time we want to check that the net quantity of the leg number 2 now this is the stop loss for the call position right that is the first leg so we are checking the net quantity of the second leg that is the put option over here so let me just check uh, just uh, put this nifty bank 1 1 2 is not equal to 0 all right so earlier we checked that the net quantity should be equal to 0 and here we are checking that the net quantity should not be equal to 0 because what we are trying to make sure over here is that the put option that is sold that is currently not squared off that means the put option uh, position is currently open then only we want to trigger the stop loss of the call leg from this particular repair one or else we will use the uh, exit set, uh, set exit in order to uh, trigger the, uh, the the exit of this particular call leg so here how we will do it so we will add one more condition that now we will put the stop loss condition that ltp of traded instrument name Y Bank Nifty Bank one one one. That is the call option is greater than traded instrument price, traded instrument entry price of Nifty Bank 
leg number one, condition number one, leg number one, set number one, leg number one, condition number one, plus number twenty. All right. So you can put percentage stop loss also or number wise also. But for the simplicity, we will simply put this as twenty points as the stop loss. So what we are saying is that whenever the a straddle has been sold, that is leg number one and leg number two has been sold. It is already traded, and we are checking that the put position is open. All right, so that whenever the put position is open, then only we want to use this stop loss for the call option. That whenever the LTP of one 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 is greater than the entry price of one one one, that is the call leg by twenty points. All right, so this is the stop loss for the call call option that we have sold. So in order to uh, over here we will add the position of call. So what we will do is exchange NFO call. nifty bank mis current week but here we will put the formula for strike because what happens is that if the uh, index moves by say 100 points then atm will be different so we cannot choose atm uh, as the strike but we will choose the strike that we have sold in the straddle at early in the morning right so what we will do is we will use the traded instrument keyword traded instrument entry strike of the call leg why Bank one one one. All right. So this is basically the it will basically square off the strike that has been sold in the in the short straddle that we initiated in entry. All right. So this is for call option. We will select quantity as lots and one. So this is how we put a stop loss. This is the call option stop loss that we have sold in the first entry. This is the one. So this is the repair ones that we used for this call option stop loss. Now similarly, we will use the second repair for the put position stop loss. All right. So I'll just save this again. Always remember to update the strategy after every step because or else the data might not get saved and you will have to do this again and again. All right. So this is the first repair. After that, similarly, what we will do is we will uh, basically just simply copy this particular position since I don't want to actually. Just uh, do this again and again. So I will just update this and it will give me an option to copy paste. All right. So for example, I will copy this and repair once from here. I will add it over here and I will simply paste it. So it will be the same uh, position, but I will make certain modifications over here also for the put position. Also, I want to check that the the first leg and the uh, second leg, that is the call and put, have been sold. But over here, I want to check that the call option. Has been uh, is not equal to zero. So what I will do is I will over here I will select one 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 because in in the earlier repair we checked whether the put option was open or not. But since this is for put option, we are checking whether there is any call option position open or not. So if there is no call option, there is some position open on the call side, then only we want to trigger this uh, stop loss on the put side. So what we will do is we will simply change the leg over here. So one one two because this is for the put side. So put side or uh, traded instrument LTP is greater than entry price of the put option that is leg number two by number twenty. So this is basically for the put stop loss. All right. So we will be revising this entire thing once the strategy is created again, so that even if you're confused right now, you will get to know uh, whatever we have done. All right. And at the same time, we will put the stop loss for the put condition. So that will be basically a buy of put option since we have sold it in the entry buy of put option. Nifty Bank. This will be MIS since it's intraday. Again, we will change this to current week, and we will use strike FX formula because we want to refer to the strike that we have sold, not some other strike. All right. So traded instrument entry strike. Nifty Bank, one, one, two. All right. So this is basically entry strike one one two. That is for the put option. Again, we will select this as lot and current week. All right. So this is basically the stop loss for the put option. So this is where we sold the straddle. This is where we put the stop loss for the call option, and this is where we put the stop loss for the 
put option but this is only just the one part of the stop loss right now for example if you want to basically re enter whenever both the legs are squared off right then we want what we want to do is that the second stop loss uh, we will use the exit condition in order to uh, trigger the second stop loss so wait one i will be taking queries at the uh, at the end uh, so later on i will check the chats and everything so i will just add a new set over here that will be a dummy set so once we add a new set we will get this exit option for the set one so over here we will add a exit uh, condition for this set so over here uh, please pay attention because this is important uh, because we will be putting two different conditions all right so we will be creating two different groups over here i will just remove this and we will create uh different conditions in this case so basically over here we want to trigger the uh, set exit only if one particular leg has been has been squared off so what i will do is again i will check traded instrument entry strike t bank i will also be sharing the template at the end of the uh, this thing uh, below the webinar video on youtube there will be a template link also so you can directly copy this template also if you want to use it later on and you can make the modification so here i'm checking this traded instrument 111 at the same time i will just put traded instrument 112 because we are checking whether this uh, call and put option is traded or not and also we will check the net quantity of traded instrument in this case we are checking if the put option uh, has already been squared off so that's the reason why what we will do is we will select 1 1 2 is equal to 0 over here we are checking that the put option has already been squared off then only we will trigger call option exit from this particular set is equal to number 0 all right and now what we will do is now since the put option has already been squared off using the repair once with the stop loss condition what we will do is the call option we will move the st stop loss to cost so that is basically if you sold at 100 if the uh, put option has already been squared off then we want to basically make sure that the profit that is locked in the uh, call option should be intact to cost to cost right so that's the reason why we will use this formula so ltp of traded instrument name of y bank 111 is greater than or equal to is greater than basically a uh, traded instrument entry price Y B A N K one one one. So that is it. So this is basically when the L T P is greater than the entry price of this call. So if you sold the call option at hundred, if the put option has already been squared off, then instead of twenty point stop loss that we put for call option, what we want to do is we want to move the stop loss to cost. That's the reason why this is the cost price. So L T P greater than the cost price is basically trailing the stop loss to cost. So this is how we trail the call of option to cost if the put leg has been squared similarly we will do this for the put side also and that's the reason why we have created these two groups with or condition all right so what i will do is simply again i will just copy this condition uh, since we have already made it over here i will just put it over here traded instrument again we are checking the same that you know both the uh, instruments have been traded and over here we will copy the net quantity but with a for a different leg is equal to number 0 but over here we are checking that the call option has been squared off right so basically what i will do is i will check whether the call option is zero so if the call option uh, uh, stop loss has been triggered from a uh, repair once then in that case uh, the put option uh, this this uh, set exit will trigger the uh, the put option stop loss through through this all right so what we will do is again i will just simply copy paste this formula also so this is how easy it is you don't have to type this again and again once you have already typed it and you will have to just change the legs copy and paste over here so leg number 2 and this also leg number 
two. All right. So since see, uh, as you can see over here, the, the what we checked over here is that the call, the put option that is one one two when it is squared off through repair one. Then we are moving the call option stop loss that is the one 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 leg to cost. Similarly, over here in the second group, what we are checking is that when the call option has been squared off through repair once, then the put option that is one one two leg is the one that we are moving to the cost price. Okay, so that is how we trail the stop loss to the cost price of each leg through set exit. All right. Now, see the the thing that I want to tell over here is that. If, if we had not included the second set over here is uh, right then we would have directly had to exit the strategy from universal exit now issue is that if you want to re enter into this uh, this straddle after a universal exit then in that case you need to select the time over here as at least 2 minutes so you have to wait for 2 minutes but in this case what will happen is that since you are triggering this to a, a set exit what will happen is once this both legs are squared off Again, automatically, since the net quantity is zero and the, even the uh, net quantity of first and the second leg will be zero, and this condition will also be true, so it will automatically again sell the straddle at that point in time. So it will be like a looping condition. So you can enter multiple times into the same straddle. All right. So that's the reason why we added another set in order to trigger uh, extra set exit. All right. So over here, this is basically this is of no use actually. This is only to uh, basically dummy a dummy set in order to enable set exit. So what I will do is, in since this is just a dummy set, I will simply uh, put one dummy condition over here that you know uh, I want this to be traded say only on weekday six. That is Saturday, right? So Saturday is uh, is anyway uh, the the markets are closed, so it will not trigger anyway, right? So number. So as I mentioned, this is just a dummy set. That's the reason why we are not doing anything. We are just putting this as a random number, and also I want to put say time. Should be after ten o'clock in the night only. NSE is greater than equal to number twenty-two, and also I will put the condition as time is less than equal to number twenty-two zero one zero one. All right so that is basically when the markets are not at all open so in any case this uh, condition will never be true but since we have to just add another set in order to trigger the looping condition of the of the straddle that we have sold above that's the reason why we are doing this so we'll just put say nfo call option nrml current month uh, nifty bank the bank uh, quantity is 1 and i will just close it over here that's the reason why we will not do anything all right and also we will put a set exit condition for this dummy set we will just copy from here we will just paste it with the same condition so we will not make any changes over here and uh, the universal exit when the strategy we uh, want to exit this particular looping condition also right so what we will do is in the universal exit we will put a specific time at around uh, 3 pm when we want to say exit the strategy so what i will do is universal exit since this is an intraday strategy we will put time is greater than equal to number say 1501 so since uh, in the entry condition we have used uh, time should be less than 15 that means it will not take any entry after 3 o'clock and at 3 1 pm it will automatically exit the entire strategy even if uh, the any positions are open or not all right and we will set the reactivate time to 2 hr so it will automatically get activated for the next trading day continuously uh, we will maintain the checks and i uh, will change this to uh, since we are taking entry at 917 i will change the uh, entry condition time start condition check time to just 1 minute because if we keep it just 10 minutes then it will be 925 and it will not take the trade on time and the last condition check can be 10 15 more uh, 15 minutes that's also fine in this case all right and then i will just update the strategy now let me take you through this entire strategy once again so you will understand what we have done so far all right uh, and also i will show you how to basically if you want to uh, re enter into this straddle again and again right so if you want to in this case what will happen is that every time the call and put option is squared off it will automatically again take the trade but we want uh, uh, if you want to restrict the number of uh, uh, straddles that it enters during the day then you can use the a uh, position details keyword so the way to do it is so i will use positions detail if suppose uh, this will be entry transaction 
or a transaction cell. All right. This will be both call and put. All right. And this will be quantity. And I will select Nifty Bank. Right. Now, since if if you want the entry to be just one time, all right, then no uh, uh, second time entry. If you do not want, then what you will do is you will simply put position details. Our uh, Nifty Bank cell quantity is equal to number zero. So this is basically for one time entry. All right. Now, if you want to enter into this straddle two times in a day, this is basically for one time entry. If you want to enter two times, then what you will do is you will simply change this position details to is greater than equal to number minus fifty. So the logic behind this fifty is that the lot size of a bank Nifty is twenty five, right? So one lot of call option is basically minus twenty five. And one lot of put option is basically minus twenty five, so that total comes to minus fifty. All right, so that's the reason why if you want to take entry only once, then you use position details is equal to zero. If you want to take take entry only twice into this straddle, short straddle, then you put uh, position details is greater than equal to minus fifty. Then after that, if you want to take entry th three times, then what you will do is you will change this to hundred. All right. If you want to take four times, then you will change this to one fifty, and so on. So this is how you use the position details to restrict the number of times that you want to enter into this particular straddle. All right. So this is how we do it. So now uh, I will just take you through this entire strategy that we did. So first we check that the time should be uh, greater than nine seventeen and three pm. Also the net quantity of one 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 and net quantity of one one two. That is leg number one, set number one, and uh, condition number one. Is zero. So what we are checking over here is essentially that the time is so and so, and this particular leg. This is leg number one, set number one, condition number one. That is call option. This is leg number one, uh, set number one, and condition uh, num uh, leg number two, uh, set number one, and condition number one. So this is one one one. This is one one two. So both this net quantity is basically initially equal to zero, and that's the reason why we are entering into this particular. I will have to mute all. Yeah. So basically, so that's when we enter into a straddle. Now we use two repair once conditions in order to trigger the stop loss of individual legs. So the first individual leg we are checking for the call option. So this is the stop loss of call option for twenty points. But before this stop loss of uh, call option triggers, we are making sure that the put option is currently open. That's the reason why it's not equal to zero. That means the put option has not hit the stop loss. It is currently open. That is when we are triggering this repair one stop loss for the call option. So once this call option uh, stop loss is triggered, and we are also checking whether the the uh, uh, the traded instrument one 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 and one one two have been traded. That is leg number one and two have already entered into the strategy. All right. So once this is done, after this, we are also putting an individual stop loss to the put side. That's the reason why we selected strike FX as Entry strike one one one. This is the call option strike that we traded in the entry. And similarly for the put option side, what we did was we checked whether the call option uh, is currently open. That we are, uh, if the call option stop loss has hit already, then we will exit this particular leg from the set exit. But since it is already open, that's the reason why we are putting individual stop loss to the put side. That it should trigger only when the stop loss uh, moves when the price moves by high uh, higher by twenty points for the put side. That is one one two. All right, and after that, we will also uh, uh, put the position that you know this particular strike that that is the strike that we entered for the put option is the one that we are squaring off. So that is how we put the individual stop loss for the call and put side, and then in the set exit, we are doing exactly the opposite. That once the one one two that is the put option is squared off via repair once, then we are moving the stop loss of the call sold uh, sold call option to cost. That's the reason why LTP is greater than the cost price or uh, around that price. Then automatically this uh, particular leg will exit, so you will not face uh, loss on the other leg. Similarly, if the call option has already been sold off, that is basically the through repair from one one one. Then we are checking that the put option stop loss is moved to cost, so LTP is greater than uh, the entry price of the put side. So that is how we put the uh, we trail the stop loss to the cost. And again, when both of these legs get uh, exited, right? Now, since this condition will be true, the entry condition, it will again, uh, it will again take re-entry. 
how many times in this case it will be four times as we discussed because we have put the position detail if you put position details is zero it will take entry only once and using this formula uh, that we discussed you can automatically increase the number of times and restrict the number of times you want to enter into the straddle during the day after this what will happen is that now the second set that we have created is as it is dummy this is not going to take trade anyway because the weekend the weekday is equal to 6 is saturday and it's at 10 o'clock when the markets are not open at all so this is just for the dummy purpose that we created the set so we have to ignore that and we have to make sure that the universal exit is happening at 3 o'clock so 3 1 pm the strategy will be exited automatically after 12 hours that is for the next day the strategy will again reopen and automatically it will start taking the trades at 9 17 since we have put this put the start condition check after exchange open as 1 minute and uh, the last condition check that is 315 it will stop checking for the condition all right so this is how we basically create a strategy now if you if you have any doubts related to how the strategy is created on tradetron uh, etc then this is our tradetron youtube channel so similar to this uh, all the previous videos that we have created on tradetron are already available in this so for example these are the previous uh, sessions of 40 50 minutes every friday we have this strategy creation session so you will find this videos over here you can watch this strategy creation videos on different topics that will help you out to create strategy on tradetron at the same time we also have a, a keyword documentation that is available at the bottom of the page i will first update this strategy and save it so at the bottom of the page you will find there is keyword documentation in resources so all of the keywords that we use right in order to create a particular strategy all of those keywords how to use a particular keyword all of those examples are available over here and with their ex explanation so how to use position ball bollinger band width or if you want to use say a demo or any keyword that you want to use right ema super trend etc all of those examples are available over here you can watch this and you can create your strategies all right so all of those details are available over here and also if you want to learn more about uh, the tradetron and things like that then also we have this tt university tt uni so over here we have launched certain courses also Uh, advanced strategy building courses are available so you can just navigate through this particular page and uh, if you want to if you are interested in one of the courses about advanced strategy building etc then uh, all of the courses are available over here so if you are interested you can go through this as well so all of those resources are available over here and at the same time if you have any doubts you can get in touch with us through this particular uh, chat box uh, we are available from 9 am till 12 o'clock in the night on live chat at the same time if you want uh, you can also contact us on this particular number so on the contact details you will find uh, this number this is our uh, our call center number you can contact us on that from 9 am to 5 pm and also you can raise a support ticket and we will be able to address your queries on support so this is how we uh, work on strategies so if you have any questions now i am open to questions thank you hello yeah hi yeah hi uh, how did you uh, i mean i didn't get the exit condition wherein you adjusted the trailing stop loss yeah uh, for uh, let's say that uh, call stop loss has been triggered and right. call has been exited right. after that how are you shifting the the uh, uh, the price for the put yeah so the put side right so over yeah. here no so this is basically the uh, we are checking that you know the call uh, the first the call option and put option has been traded right right after that you are checking that net quantity of 111 is zero so 111 right. is zero means what that means the call option has got a square yes. off right yes. correct so this ltp hmm. is greater than equal to so when the call option stop loss is hit that means this hmm. call option has moved uh, uh, say from 100 to 120 correct Okay. If the call option is moved from 100 to 120. If the put option and the call option both were sold at 100, correct? Mm. So mm. if the call has moved from 100 to 120, that means the put option would have moved from 100 to 80 or somewhere down. Right. Correct. So the cost is what 100, right? Right. Correct. So now if the cost moves from of the put option moves back from 90 rupees to again 100 rupees or higher, that mm. is when you want to exit that put, right? Okay. Correct? So, so LTP, that is the current price of put, when it is greater than the traded instrument entry price, that is hundred okay. rupees. 
Okay. That is when you will trigger the basically the exit of the put option. Correct. Okay. Similarly, okay. similarly for the call option also, we are mm. checking that the put option has already been squared off through right. the through the uh, uh, repair once. That's the reason why whenever that has happened, then we are checking that the call option when it moves again to the cost price, we will exit that away. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So that is how we trail the stop loss basically. But Keep how going. is it exiting? Like how is the function? I mean, we are not. So we this are, is we are set exit, a... right? So this is set exit, right? Acha, acha, acha. Okay. So okay. So exit is, is just repair one. Yeah. So got this it, is basically it, set exit. So since we are putting this condition in set exit, that's the reason why it will trigger whichever leg is open in this particular set. So one leg is already squared off from this repair. Correct. Mm, Either mm. and then we are triggering the set exit so that whichever is the open leg in this set, it will trigger mm. through this set exit. And automatically, since the quantity is again zero, it will automatically mm. start taking the trade from here. that you know what uh, if you don't put position detail then it will re enter into that straddle again okay, okay. Uh, regarding this position detail like how have you uh, i mean let's say that if i want to trade four times then you put this condition right correct right uh, greater than uh, or equal to one minus so that's basically lot sign right so that's the reason yeah, why i explained yeah. it so basically uh, uh, if you take uh, entry first time then it will be zero correct If you want to take entry, no, no. Stop. This on this itself, I'm not getting. Can you explain the the function? You're right. Uh, the position detail function, if you can explain. Yeah. So position detail restricts the number of entry. So it checks okay. the quantity, number of times it has been traded. This particular sold quantity of the mm. Nifty Bank is how much? So if it is zero, that means it will take entry one time. So once it okay. is already entered, then automatically it will not be zero, right? That means it's already right. minus fifty is the quantity, right? So if when mm. it's minus fifty is the quantity, that means it will not enter again. Okay, so okay. that's the reason why it will how it will restrict to zero when it is zero. So now if you want to okay. take entry two times, then we will change this to quantity as fifty mm. because we are checking that you know first it has entered when the quantity was zero. Again it has entered, mm. but still the quantity is minus fifty. It has not gone below so, beyond that. So how that's is it? Reason. How is the number of times it is traded? How is that getting updated? So that's the I, number of lot size, right? So basically, call to sell. Entry position here we have selected entry mm. sold uh, as okay and quantity in Nifty Bank over here we are checking all we are not checking only for call and put if we select it, only it. call then it but all is basically fifty quantity twenty five quantity of I call I get that and, I get yeah. that uh, yeah. but that's not my question what I'm uh, trying to ask is let's say that I traded once first time Correct. okay right then then uh, this number like greater than equal to minus fifty the yeah. number part. Okay, yeah. how is that getting? Like, how is the algo keeping track of how many times I have taken this? Yeah, so that is calculated at the back end, right? So basically, okay. once you have entered this position detail, this will store the value that this hmm. strategy well while entering it has already entered into so and so quantity. So that's automatic process. So that's how it's uh, calculating the quantity at the back end. So once okay. you have entered the position detail, will automatically store the value of fifty. Okay. So the positions detail is all uh, is calculating that how many times. Yes, 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 okay. yes. This okay. keyword okay. is calculating that. Yeah. Okay, okay. And what's the difference? Last question. What's the difference between repair once and repair continuous? So repair continuous is basically if you want to enter into this again and again, right? Then uh, in that case, for example, the repair once is basically it will trigger only once. So once this there is entry, okay. After that there is repair once, and then after that there should be a set exit or universal exit. Because this repair once will not uh, trigger again because this triggers only once. All right, that's the reason why it's na the name is given as repair once. Repair continuous is basically when if you want to sell this again and again, this particular repair, right? If there is a price moves to certain level, then again if you want to trigger this again and again, then that is the one that you have to use. But the issue with that is sometimes in that case you have to make sure that the net quantity that is there should oh. be uh, the number should be put in such a manner that you know uh, it should not create any issues. Because if okay. you if you do not calculate the number properly over here, then it mm. will go into loop. Because repair continues. What it will do is it will check that the quantity is not equal to zero or is equal to zero, and automatically it will continuously keep on selling, selling, selling. So there is a risk involved in that. Okay. It will so it will continuously keep on buying, right? Not selling. Buying in or selling? Case. Yeah, in this case, yeah. In, in this case, it yeah. will keep on uh, buying, uh, buying, buying the product. Buying. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Understood. Okay. So that's the difference between repair once and repair continuous. This will happen only once, and repair continuous will happen again and again. But The, in order to avoid using repair continuous, we are using this particular format. What we are doing is entry is from here. Mm. Then we are triggering repair once, and we are sent, uh, exiting from a uh, set exit because that will help us to enter into this straddle again. But uh, the cycle will be complete. 
because what happens is that when you're using repair once right mm. once the repair once is triggered again the entry might happen but the repair once will not be triggered because this will not uh, the cycle will not be complete unless the set exit is uh, triggered got okay. it so that's the reason why it has to move in this particular cycle that is the reason why i've created this template i will be sharing this video as well as this template on a youtube channel and you can download this template so that is uh, so you will not have any confusions according to that all right so once once the set yeah. exit is once yeah. the set exit is uh, done uh, is yeah. executed then uh, the algo by default assumes that if if still the entry conditions are met then it will enter again yes so basically what it will check is the net quantity is zero right so when the call and put option are again okay. this thing okay. uh, zero okay. Okay. it's sold okay. off okay. that means the net quantity is zero so it will enter hmm. again into uh, so how how can i keep a cooling period if let's say once the set is complete like entry stop loss whatever exit yeah. and then i want a, a cooling period of 5 minutes and after that entry is triggered then in that case you have to use the other option that we have right so basically instead of this repair uh, set exit you remove this uh, set number 2 you use the uh, universal exit for that okay? okay and then using repair universe over here you have the time exit uh, time right reactivate mm. after 5 minutes okay so okay. basically when you are exiting through universal exit you have that cooling period uh, time over here so you can choose okay. 5 minutes after which you want to reenter into this particular channel okay right? okay 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 Got it. So, Got but it. in this case the reason why we have made this setup is because we want to immediately enter if you want right. the cooling period then you will use the universal exit and you will use this particular time in order to uh, basically trigger the reentry okay got it got it thank yeah. you so much yeah okay no problem all right okay i think uh, we are done with this uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, because i, I don't think we have much time yeah okay okay all right please go ahead i have like 2 3 minutes more yeah I, can you explain the conditions because i didn't understand so you're saying set one condition one leg one right yeah yeah I, okay when let me the explain. condition change to two for example yeah so in this case right so for example this is set number 1 okay this is entry okay this is entry leg number 1 and uh, i don't understood i'm talking only about the condition so when condition yeah, so this is this is basically repair once condition number 1 okay and this is repair once condition number uh, this thing repair once 2 okay no uh, can you click on the edit please yeah so this one edit okay so yeah okay i will just uh, so, click on this. yeah can you click on anything yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay trade instrument so yeah, now, when, when you say condition number, number when you say so, condition correct, number correct correct so uh, yeah yeah so i'll tell you that so okay so this is a condition entry right mm -hmm. so if i choose this entry repair into repair once if i change this okay so ah. this repair once is basically this is the first repair repair once set number 1 leg like num condition number 1 this is the, uh, repair once condition number 1 Okay, and yeah, like which number, one is this condition number one? Is not I'm this not is sure. this is condition. Uh, this is repair once condition number. No, one. under condition. So if under the condition itself, we have two three groupings you made, and or if we are constructing. No, right? right? So, the, so this condition is basically see this. I will just explain this. So when that condition will go to two is my question. Yeah. So this is basically repair once condition number one, and this is repair once condition number two. Okay, so this is repair one condition number two. Two, yes. So repair one condition number two. If you want to check this particular, this so when will you get one. set number one and condition number two? Yeah. So if I add another, set, this is set number one, right? If I add this repair, this is repair one set number one condition number one. Okay. Set so number one. Set number one. two, right? This is set. Sorry, yeah, correct. This is set number two condition number. Repair once condition number one. One. Okay. Huh, so yeah. I'm asking when that condition will go to two. So this repair, no. If I add this and another repair over here, uh -huh. this will be repair once condition number two. Okay, okay. So only the repairs will have condition change, not the right, right. Condition. Not not the entry because see over here if you add two more conditions, right? So this is basically entry. This is leg number one, leg number two. I can. Uh, that I understand. Yeah. So that will be addition of legs. That will be a not addition of condition, but condition will be added for repair once. Okay. This okay, is okay. like repair once condition number one, repair once condition number two. Similarly, this will be set number two, repair once condition number one for set number two. Okay. Set number one, condition number one, 
and this is set number sorry set number 2, 2 condition number 1, 1 and, and set one number 2 condition number 2 that okay because i was thinking even the entry sets will have because you were uh, writing time is greater than a lesson so that i thought it is conditions uh, no 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 not for time so time is uh, separate only for traded instrument keyword right this for this keyword this is where we use the leg numbers and things like that for repair etc okay and once we update uh, or do any changes and uh, once we have Uh, deployed correct right now uh, once we have deployed then again if i want to uh, edit something for some reason it didn't trigger and i edit some mistake and i yeah. came back and i updated something will yeah. that get reflected yeah normally it gets reflected but there is a there is a caveat to that so there is a risk involved that sometimes the server if it's not uh, capturing the changes that you have made right like for example if you made the changes the stop loss from say 20 points to 30 points and if you update the strategy ideally it will take that into the live entered already entered position but what we recommend is that uh, always make sure that whatever changes you want to make right you make it before deploying the strategy or else what you can do is you can just simply square off the position and make the changes in the strategy and redeploy it again because okay, when you from the from the deployed i cannot edit anything uh no so for example the, if this is the deployed strategy right deployed page correct yeah so my question is in the deployed if i do any edit will it get updated also in the strategies you mean oh yeah well you know this yeah. is basically the edit no this is the correct. page that you're talking about this is yeah this is the same page no this is the edit strategy page of the strategy if yeah, you make so any changes over update. here yes if you update it it should be ideally reflected in this strategy in the but strategy as saying, well as in the deployed right yes but yes strategy as well as in this deployed calculation but the thing is there is a risk involved that's what i'm trying to tell you that you know uh -huh. what if there is some server issue then the actually entered strategy might not calculate it so we recommend that you know if you before moving to edit right make sure that these positions are exited pair of this position uh -huh. then make the changes and redeploy the strategy okay? okay so then it will take all the fresh calculations properly then and sometimes we have to search for some uh, strategies right with the sid id how do i search with the sid id so yeah so basically so over here if you go to deployed right this is the sid correct this is the sid number so basically if you want to check any strategy so you don't have to check through that so uh, it is basically for the tradetron team to check uh, the sid and according to check uh, to so sometimes check. we get confused which one we deployed which one we didn't test but So you can be, yeah so from here only we will be the only way to identify from the deployed page is this this is the sid but i will not be able to search with that id is what you say ah uh, no yeah so you not be able to search that's right so you'll have to basically if there are multiple strategies then you'll have to navigate from this page that's it and in the back testing right once we have uh, submitted uh, some uh, codes we develop and we put it in back testing it does not start the back testing after some time we come to know okay yeah, so basically better. so yeah for the back test the thing is uh, uh, it's in the beta mode currently so that's about it takes about 24 to 48 hours for the back no, test no no i'm not talking about the time what i'm saying is uh, we will not know whether we did a mistake in uh, creating the strategy that time the back testing itself has not triggered it has not generated any report after 2 3 days also Oh uh, yeah so, so then we realize that we have done some error in the yeah. okay yeah so in no. that case we can trigger uh, we can basically credit you the strategies uh, uh, the back test uh, and the credit time, is, it yes yeah, yes okay. we can credit that also uh, there is this blog on tradetron all right so all about back test so you can refer to this blog and check uh, uh, on in under what condition back test will work and it will not work and we will so also there is a contact somebody because i did some yeah so you right? have this yeah so you can contact us on our live chat support right just mention that back test id and okay. then our team will credit back the back test to you okay and how many days uh, should it be back any condition because even last uh, so back test should be completed in 48 hours if it takes more than that then you will have to contact the customer no that is not a concern actually trade down is good in that but only yeah. my question is regarding it is not triggered and my back test count is going down so yeah so basically we can credit credit back the back test to you man that's okay. our issue so i have okay. to just put a chat with uh, support team yes right okay All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, yeah. My All question right. is not answered. Sorry. My question is not answered. So, which is your question? Can I make a strategy for Conor? Uh, yeah, I've mentioned it. So, this uh, particular keyword, right? That's what I just replied to you, sir. That this particular keyword is, I think, not available as of now. So, we will have to check that. So, you can write a mail to support at the rate tradeon dot tech, and we will reply to you when it will be available. Okay. Okay, no problem. Okay, all right, yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, yeah.